You can do a sort of so this is just a uh, sort of example for this uh, ligand receptor binding. You can use a similar approach for different problems. For example, if you think of this, uh, let me come back to this RNA polymerase problem. So, this is the whole transcription and translation process. We are just interested in this part this RNA polymerase. And again, you can calculate this p bound, right? As a function, we calculated the entropy. But now, if you said that when this RNA polymerase, uh, okay, so let me just say this a little bit clearly. Uh, so let's now consider a similar problem for this RNA polymerase binding. So I have this one. I have this one D DNA which has these sites, right? I forget about the physical 3D structure of the DNA. And I consider that this RNA polymerase can come and bind and it can sort of hop around this. Maybe this site is a specific site. So, this is the site where it wants to go and bind. So, it has some energy for going and sitting on this on this specific site let me call it specific, but it can also bind non specifically to this sequence. Okay. So, it can bind weakly to this other other sequences over here and let me call the energy for that as epsilon non specific. Again, it is an approximation in that energy will depend on the exact sequence that you have, but let me say that all sequences as long as it is non specific binding will have some energy epsilon n s. When it goes and sits on the site that it wants to, so that it can start reading the gene, that energy is lower and that I will call as my epsilon s. And then again, we will do if you do the same business that you have n p number of polymerases, you have n number of available sites and so on you can calculate what is the probability that an RNA polymerase is going to be bound specifically to this site and that is again going to look very similar. So, that is again going to look very similar to this whatever expression we had. So, again if you calculate what is p binding. So, this I will leave because it is exactly the same sort of a calculation p bound is going to be p which is the uh, let me call it n p by n e to the power of minus beta delta e by 1 plus n p by n e to the power of minus beta delta. So, exactly what we had, but now delta e is the difference between the specific binding energy and the non specific binding energy. So, epsilon specific minus epsilon. And again, if you go back and look at experimental data for different sort of uh, proteins binding on this DNA. So, this is lac per protein in E coli this red curve. This is P 7 I think is a bacteriophage. So, this is another polymerase uh, which is the blue one is a polymerase that is found in the bacteriophage T 7 ok. So, again these are experimental measurements of the probability that a uh, this uh, polymerase molecule is bound in two different organisms uh, as a function of the number of RNA polymerase molecules. And again, you see that the curves look exactly as would be predicted by this sort of a language adsorption isotherm. You can read off what would be the values of this delta E's, what is the difference in the specific versus the non specific binding energies for these different polymerases in different organisms. Okay. So, it is true that these uh, are very simple calculations, but even so, you can often look at experimental data and get some information out about the underlying biological system using these very simple models like this. If one can of course, build more and more complicated models, but what I wanted to show at least for today was that even these simple models um, often can be used to interpret real experimental data. Um, so, we will continue with this binding with a little more uh, maybe little more biologically uh, complicated models uh, where you can have multiple ligands and so on and so forth different complications which we look at. This is a nice day. So, I just I will just take 2 minutes to describe this. So, you know that inside cells uh, hydrophobic interactions are often a large or hydrophobic forces are a large uh, or often a very important factor. 
which determines for example, even structure of protein folding and so on. This uh, lipid bilayer formation where you keep the hydrophobic tails inside and the hydrophilic parts outside and so on. So, what is the origin of this hydrophobic forces? You can think of them in terms of a sort of entropic picture, a very hand waving picture, but nonetheless. Uh, so, here is water right um, H2O the orange thing is the oxygen the white ones are the hydrogens. Um, the the oxygen forms a hydrogen bond with a hydrogen molecule of a neighboring water right. So, here is one oxygen here is the hydrogen of a neighboring water molecule it forms a hydrogen bonding between them. And similarly, so whenever you have an oxygen next to a hydrogen you can form a hydrogen bonding. Often you will find this sort of a tetrahedral structure uh, tetrahedral symmetry. So, this sits at the center of the tetrahedron and these are the four vertices of the tetrahedron okay. due to this oxygen binding uh, sorry due to this hydrogen bond. So, now you can think of this that uh, let us say you have a sea of such water molecules which are arranged in this sort of a tetragonal structure. So, if I think of this water molecule at the center it can form. So, this form sits at the center of the tetrahedron and it can form these oxygen molecules depending on which way they are oriented can form hydrogen bonding with waters at the other vertices of the tetrahedron right. So, these are the six possible confi conformations depending on which way your oxygen molecule oxygen bonds point. So, here they are pointing along this axis there one is pointing along this one is pointing along that and so on. So, these are the microstates in some sense corresponding to this hydrogen bonding network or this hydrogen bonding tetrahedron. Okay. For this one water molecule which sits at the center of this tetrahedron, ok. Um, so, you can say that the number of microstates that are possible. So, each of these conformations is a microstate for that water molecule, right. So, I can say that the number of microstates in this case is going to be 6 ok depending on which way this water molecule is oriented. Is that clear? So, now let us say that you place you replace a water molecule and you place a molecule which does not like to form a hydrogen bond right. So, let us say you replace at any one vertex. So, let us say you replace at this vertex instead of a water molecule you place a polar molecule which should not like to form a hydrogen bond. Then what would happen? If there is no water molecule on this vertex then this configuration is no longer allowed because it cannot form a hydrogen bond there is no water here. This configuration is not allowed that configuration is not allowed. Is that clear? This, this central oxygen cannot form a hydrogen bond with the water here because there is no water here. It cannot form a hydrogen bond with the new molecule here or with the new molecule there. These ones are still fine because here this oxygen is forming a hydrogen bond with the water which is present there that I have not replaced. Okay. So, if I replace the water molecule by a new molecule which does not form a hydrogen bond at any one of these vertices ok. Then I reduce the number of available conformations from 6 to 3 right. So, in this new case uh, you can call it omega nu I have only 3 available conformations. So, by introducing a molecule which does not like to form uh, hydrogen bonding I have reduced the number of available conformations from 6 to 3. Again this is very simple to take it with a pinch of salt, but still the basic principle is this ok. So, if I now say that therefore, what is the change in entropy right what is this delta s? The delta s is k b log 6 minus k b minus k b log 3 right which is therefore, minus k b log 2 per molecule of water that I have replaced ok. So, this is k b log 2 per molecule of water that I have replaced by this new molecule which does not like to form a hydrogen bond. Therefore, the total free if I want it the total free energy cost given that I had replaced n such molecules would go roughly as n k b t log 2 ok. 
this n is in some sense uh, ok. So, if you are faced with a mixture of hydrophobic and uh, hydrophobic molecules and water what it would like to do is that it. So, this delta g is something like n k b t log 2 where n is the number of molecules which share an interface with water right. So, what it would like to do then is to minimize this number of n right if it wants to to minimize its free energy it would like to minimize the number of contact points of this molecule with water which is what this hydrophobic interaction does right. So, if if I think of lipid membranes or whatever uh, or vesicles, it reduces the interaction of these hydrophobic paths with water. So, that this n, this effective n, which is the number of hydrophobic molecules which come into contact with water, uh, that gets reduced and therefore that stabilizes the structure. Okay. So, at the heart of it is this sort of you can think of it as so this is again, of course, a very simple way, but you can think of it as this reduction in the number of available microstates when you place a hydrophobic molecule over here ok. You want to reduce it reduces the number of available conformations and therefore, that has a change in the free energy. So, even this hydrophobic forces which are this fundamental forces you can think in terms of this uh, changes in free energy or changes in entropy that are associated with the change like this ok. I think that is all I have yes that is all I have. So, again these are the reference chapters from Nelson and from Phillips uh, and of course, uh, please if you have forgotten please read up the statmec part. We will be using a little more statmec as we go along today is fairly simple ok. Thank you.